Hi everyone, welcome back to the Crafts of Comics. My name is Jacob, I'll be your host for today again. Um, today I have Clayton Henry. We're here on our second week of this workshop for where you can learn um, from some of Valiant's best artists. Be sure to grab your book, um, your workbook, where you can draw and enter for your, um, excuse me, enter into the official contest that we have for the ultimate prize. Um, do, 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 do. Like I was saying, sorry, today we have Clayton Henry, artist for Archer and Armstrong, Harbinger, right? Mm -hmm. um, the upcoming Book of Death, what I learned today. The Fall of Exo Man of War in the okay. Book of Death. Okay, and then some other great stuff. Um, also, be sure later on we're going to have, our, I'll be asking him some questions. We're going to do some demonstrations that all of y'all can see and so maybe participate in. Um, and then later on we're going to have a live Q&A um, off of Twitter. So uh, be sure to enter your questions now um, with the hashtag ValiantLiveQA. Um, so send those in now. We'll start looking through them. And then um, we'll go from there. So uh, first thing, Clayton Henry, artist. Um, tell us a little bit about what you've done um, or how you've gotten to where you are for Valiant. Uh, well, as far as what I've done, um, uh, I've worked uh, before Valiant. I worked for uh, uh, Marvel uh, and DC and did some work at Image uh, also. Um, for, uh, I've been working for Valiant now for the past about three and a half years. And for them, I've worked on uh, Archer and Armstrong, uh, Harbinger Wars, Harbinger, and uh, I just recently finished up an issue of Book of Death, The Fall of Exo Man of War. Sweet, sweet. So um, we're just going to get into the, a few questions. So um, last week, James spoke about the beginning process of it being an editorial and then just writing, and then it goes into an artist hand, which is you, essentially, a penciler, yeah. mm -hmm. also, right? Um, so what does your artistic, how does your art, where does it begin, like your artistic process? Do you... How do you break down on turning a script into a visual? Uh, well, you know, first you uh, read through this uh, the script, obviously, and then as soon as I read through the script, or as I'm reading through it, it'll actually take me a lot longer uh, to read a script than you know uh, if I was reading it without intending on drawing anything. Because as I'm reading through it, then I'll instantly imagine myself, um, you know, sketching it out, or um, and, and how and, and a lot of times when I read a script, I actually imagine it playing out as if it were a movie. Okay. And when I imagine it playing as if it were a movie, then I'll sort of do a freeze frame. You know, just I mean, just mentally. You know, uh, you in, take, in like, my mind. Do you ever take notes while that's happening, or like, do you stop and like, oh, this would actually be really great, and then? I should do that. I should do that, but I don't. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a good idea that I'm probably going to do from now on. But no, I don't. I don't do that. Uh, normally, I, you know, I just. Uh, uh, Skim through it, get a general idea of, of, of how things are going to pace, and then uh, when I start reading it again, um, page by page, I'll, I'll read, you know, uh, go back to page one, read page one by itself, and then um, uh, start, start sketching out. So. Cool. Um, so, s talking about pages, how do you break down a page? <coughs> um, like, what's your first step? After? I guess we'll let. Pretty much is your next step, right? So, um, if we we'll, if we can look at some of these pages, um, if you can tell us kind of a little bit about, I guess what the lines are for, or how you end up visualizing some of these. Well, th this is this is a really good example here. Uh, normally, these blocks, uh, th this grid here, would not be here. Okay. Um, it's just one blank one. It would be. I mean, you'd you'd have the parameters of the page. But it wouldn't be set up to where, okay, like like right now we have in this book here, where we have this rectangle, and then you can start, you know, drawing people here, you know, do, a, a, acting out a scene or whatever. You, you know, it, it's it's not going to be like this. It would just be totally blank, and then you could, as the artist, can divide it up, uh, however you wanted to, and how you're going to pace the story. Um, sometimes I'll read through the script. And I might. Uh, what happens a lot is the writer may things may things may be happening in the writer's mind at a certain pace that it doesn't really uh, doesn't doesn't really uh, uh, look great on the page because it may be missing a, a, it may be missing a step. For example, he may go from panel uh, one to panel three, and then I'll, uh, uh, to panel two, and I'll think no. That should really be three panels. He, he, okay. There should really be a step in between there that he's missing, and then I'm, I might add it. Okay. 
or a lot of times, uh, this happens a, a lot, is uh, a writer might make a, a character do too many things in one panel. All within one. Yeah, like, uh, for example, a, a writer might do something as simple as say, OK, this character uh, grabs a mug off of the table and takes a drink in one panel. You can't do that in one panel. That's right. too many motions. He'd first have to grab the mug that would be in the first panel. And then in the second panel, then we could show him uh, taking a drink. So when you recognize those, those <coughs> missing panels that you want to throw in, do you go back to the artist and tell them, hey, this is what I want to do? Or do you initially just write it out and then show them afterwards? Uh, to the writer, um, yeah, I mean, it means sometimes. It, it, if, if the writer wants to be, you know, contacted, you know, via email and kept up to date, um, right. vast majority of them do. But once in a while, there's one of them who, uh, you know, one who may not uh, get, get be that involved in the process. That happens rarely, but generally speaking, yeah. Then I will, when I email the, the uh, page back to editorial, I'll CC the writer in the email and say, "Hey, I added a step. Hope you don't mind." And they're usually okay with it. Right. Cool. Cool. Um, so, thinking forward from there, how do you account for your artistic collaborations, such as inkers or colorists and letterers, when you when you're laying out the pages? Um, well, with uh, with inkers, uh, when I, I don't use an inker regularly now, but uh, with inkers, generally what will happen is uh, a lot of artists will, because they know that somebody's going to ink after them, the pen the penciler. Uh, which is you know the person that st initially starts drawing with a pencil. Right. He may not go into so much detail, just to save himself some time, because he knows, well, right behind me, there's going to be somebody that's going to go over this with ink, and he'll cover up a lot of my mistakes. He'll add line weight to make the drawing look a little bit better, so I can just sketch out you know really fast, and uh, you know he can um, he can clean up my mistakes. Um, you you would then uh, a part of that step would be would mean that you wouldn't have to shade things in with black. So, for example, you know, like I'll, uh, I'm drawing a character here, and you know, I would, you know, like I'll map out his hair, for example, like his hair will go, this will be his eyes, and his hair uh, would go across his face. If I want that hair to be black, I don't have to shade it in black. If I know that there's an inker right behind me, it's just going to go in with an ink brush and fill it in black. I would just simply put an X okay. for. Uh, like in the hair, so that he'd know, OK, that hair is going to be black. Um, then uh, with colorists, um, you, you can make, you could always make notes about a colorist. You, uh, for a colorist, you can always say, you know, I'd like this to be, the, the conditions in this scene have to be dusty. Okay. Then the colorist would know, OK, when I go into Photoshop, I'll make, make a light haze over this scene to make it look dusty. OK. And then that also, that, uh, that entire process also affects the letters, right? Just by work. yeah, you have to be <coughs> you have to be uh, conscious of of the amount of space you're using up when when you're drawing. So, I mean, it, it, if it's a scene where the characters are talking a lot, you may want to draw this uh, a scene where you you're totally zoomed out. Uh, you you you've uh, sort of adjusted your camera angle to where you can see all of the characters. Uh, maybe even full figure, so that way you leave a lot of dead space, and then the characters can say all the dialogue they need to say. Cool. Um, so, who are some of your artistic inspirations, or what do you do um, to pull those kind of inspirations, or who do you pull those inspirations from? Uh, it's, it's a lot of uh, a lot of artists. Um, the first being uh, wh the, why I got into comics, why I wanted to get into comics. Uh, you know, I was nine years old, and, and I first read uh, an issue of Uncanny X-Men. And it was X-Men number Uncanny X-Men number two hundred one. And when I saw that issue, and I was like nine years old, and I, I decided, well, this is what I want to do when I grow up. And I want I want to draw that book, and I want to work with this writer because I really like the story. And I got to do both those things. I you know when when I grew up, I. I, I drew uh, a few issues of uh, Uncanny X-Men, and I worked with, nice. with that writer. So that was, you know, that, that was the, uh, that's still the biggest to this day, the, I guess, the, the biggest inspiration. Now, and, and now, you know, sometimes I'll just be, you know, on the internet, or I'll walk through conventions, and um, I'll just see, you know, a, a number of, of artists, you know, nobody in particular, and, you know, just the, 
you just sort of soak up creative energy, right? You know, uh, from looking at their artwork, and you know, you might say, oh, you know, I'm going to try something similar to this technique when I when I get back home, or you know, things like that. Cool, cool. Um, so, what is it that you did from after that that nine year old moment mm -hmm. up until you actually being able to draw for Uncanny X Men? What did you? What, what was in between there? Did you go to school for? anything specific or like what did you pick up all along the way well I always liked to draw uh, yeah. from an early age uh, from maybe like four years old I remember uh, drawing things probably a good thing to start with right right and <laughs> uh, yeah it, you know I just continued it was just something I love to do so I I drew all the time and of course when you you know do something a lot you just get good at it you know that's where talent comes from and so uh, our teachers realized that you know I, I was better than most kids at drawing. So then I was put into uh, 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 magnet programs in in South Florida, where I would get um, I, I would you know get on a bus like one day a week and go to a, a school where all I did was art for one day a week. Right. And then you know attend regular school the other four days out of the week, and. Um, you know, you, you keep doing that through through school, uh, just getting better, and go to the next level in, in in middle school, and take art classes there every single day, and then high school take art classes there every single day, and the whole time, I would, while I'm doing my artwork for school, I'm also drawing comics at home, and I would eventually start submitting work to companies, uh, for a long time. A lot of rejection letters came my way, a lot. And yeah, eventually uh, somebody you know took notice of it and, and liked it. And um, my first job was at uh, was at Image Comics, and um, yeah, it's been you know uh, I've been working steadily uh, pretty much uh, since then. Okay, so you were just constantly challenging yourself no matter what, right? Well, well yeah, yeah. I mean, just just, just every on. day. Yeah, yeah just. Yeah. So with that being said, what are the types of scenarios that push you the most as an artist today? Um. Types of scenarios, like um, titles or characters. <coughs> um, you know, uh, you it, what what well, what really pushes me is looking at at other uh, car as at other artists' work. I mean, that that's really the the push for me. It's 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 not really uh, the characters because because I, I I don't I don't look for a particular title or character because. That that that's just not my focus. I just love to draw. I like to what whatever the writer has uh, that that that's on the book that uh, I'm working on. Whatever they write, like I want to be all in to whatever they write. Right. Okay, whatever they write. Okay, well now I'm going to get your idea across and put it on paper. Right. Um, and that's my focus is the drawing. So I look at other artists, and that that's what usually um, inspires me or pushes me to to keep drawing. Cool. Um, let's see. One of the questions I have is, what is one basic skill or set of knowledge that you think every artist needs to work on for comics? Uh, to draw from real life. I know we're not in the real life business uh, of drawing. I know, I know it's superheroes and everything like that, but you have to learn how to draw from real life. That's the biggest thing. And uh, th that's true with any artist. You should draw real life. You should spend, you know, as you're going through art school and growing up, you should spend 75% of your time drawing from real life. And then twenty five percent of your time doing the imaginary stuff. So, uh, and uh, probably the um, most helpful class for me, uh, definitely the most helpful class for me was uh, a draw uh, was a figure drawing classes. So, cool. Yeah, that's the main thing. So, um, does your style vary depending on the series or characters, or do you do anything different depending on who you're drawing or what you're drawing for? Um, not really, because you just kind of keep the same. Yeah, because uh, after a after you know a certain amount of years of doing this, when people see your style, that's what they want to hire. I mean, right. you know, nobody's you know looking at, at at my face when I'm when I'm you know when they're looking at my artwork. They're just they're just looking at the product and they say, well, I want this guy. I'm going to try and hire this guy for this book. So that's what they want. So I don't. Uh, some artists do change up their style. I I don't. Um, I think you know. Well, what you see is what you get, you know, with my art style, and um, that's what you can expect on the next project I do. 
So for somebody that's going to go into, because I'm sure you've picked up on other, working on different lines that have already had such great um, backstory to it. Mm -hmm. um, so do you always go back and look at the details of those characters and try to still do the same thing, or do you challenge that character also and then maybe give it little or more detail? Well, I try and stick with uh, what's been established already. You don't want to rock the boat too much. You don't right. want to change the way a character looks because if you're doing issue number five, if I'm doing issue number five of a title, I don't want to know. I can't nullify the first four issues. I mean, somebody's already established his character's history, uh, the character's attitude. So, no, you don't want to change things up uh, too much. Um, so yeah, I, obviously I'm going to draw in my own style, whatever you know, whether be it people like it or not. Uh, but I, I don't try and change it up too much. Okay. Um, what roles do deadlines play in your process, or how often? Like, and then one of the other things I wanted to know too is how many how many times or how many different comics are you working on at a time? Do you always just focus on one and do that one throughout, or do you work on a couple here and there, just depending on what panels are here? It's, it's one at a time. One at it's, a time. It's, it's one at a time, one at a time, and maybe along the way, an editor may tell you, may, may call me up and tell me, hey, can you take a break for a little bit? We need a character design. Okay. Or, um, hey, I need a couple of covers drawn. Can you take a break from those interior pages and draw these two covers for me? But it generally is one book at a time. Yeah. And how long does it usually take you to do a book? Uh, it takes me, um, I guess, roughly s seven weeks. Um, and and that is that that's that's kind of a long time. It's generally about maybe six weeks for most artists. Right. And that's uh, just rough sketching. N well, no, because I don't uh, draw loose at all. My uh, you know, the, the kind of work I do is is uh, you know, it's well-defined lines so because I'm focused on the line work you know that could, that takes longer and you know that's just the way I draw yeah um, so seven weeks is 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 a bit long and uh, that can you know obviously every once in a while that'll cause trouble and we may need a fill-in artist or things like that which I don't like but uh, on the flip side of that I've been drawing the you know with this amount of dedication yeah it takes a long time but with this amount of dedication for a long time, and I've managed to stay employed for a long time, so I, I think I'm going <laughs> to stay on this Just path. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, okay, so what advice do you have for young artists looking to break into the comic industry? Um, well, like I said before, uh, drawing from real life, uh, drawing as much as possible. Um, and, and, when, and when you do that, if you just draw from real life and draw as much as possible, as you get older, there's going to be more opportunities for you as an artist. So, you may think you want to be a comic book artist, but you know, after drawing for so many years and you draw from real life and you, you expose yourself to drawing different subject matters, then you may change your mind later on, and now you have the skills to do other things. Or you may, or if you stay stick with comics, it'll only make you a better comic book artist. Right. Uh, and so, and uh, experimenting with different, uh, you know, with uh, different forms of art like painting. Uh, maybe in photography. I mean, all of that helps. So just being overall pretty yeah, artsy. Pretty diverse with, yeah. with your art, yeah. Cool. Um, are there like specific utensils that you like to use? Uh, well, I like to use a uh, mechanical pencil. Well, I, you know, I've used so many um, different ways of drawing. Like right now I'm drawing with this wooden pencil here, but I normally don't draw with a wooden pencil. I normally draw with a mechanical pencil. And nowadays, I draw digitally. So normally, I've got a stylus that I'm drawing with, and I'm drawing on a monitor. Um, sometimes I'll even print out uh, the, the, the drawing, uh, the digital drawing, and then I'll ink on top of that. Then I'll be using uh, markers and pens. So um, yeah, be anywhere between. <laughs> so anywhere between a stylus and a monitor. To uh, even you know ink brushes, uh, so yeah, it's it's quite a few tools. I, I have them all lined up on a windowsill at my house, like you know, like <laughs> thirty different things. So, has there ever been a time where do artists usually have a, a, a preference on whether you use digital or 
regular pen and paper? Uh, yeah, well, you know, it, 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 yeah, it, it depends on uh, how you want to approach your art because with the digital stuff, I started doing that because it saves more time, which I then, uh, I take that extra time to put in more detail so that it takes me more time again. I, just, it totally, <laughs> I totally sabotage myself. But it does, it does uh, save time. It allows you to uh, try different things and make mistakes because with a computer, you can correct your mistakes very easily. If you, if it, like for example, if I think he's too far to the right, which he is, if this was on a computer, I could just simply put a box around him on the computer and then just move him to the left and that would be it. But as here, if I really wanted to move him to the left, I just have to erase it and start all over again. So, in a sense, that that's what's better about uh, computers. Uh, but with the computer, you lose a feeling of the texture of the paper against the pencil. That's totally gone because it's a slick surface you're drawing on now. So you have to uh, be extra careful, uh, careful there. So it it really depends on 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 the artist. Do you, you know? Do you, do you want to save time? Or, uh, or do you want to, you know, just just keep it uh, as simple as possible, and you know, uh, draw the way you used to draw when you were a little kid with just simple pen and paper, uh, pencil and paper. And have you always done digital alongside with the analog? Mm. Or you just kind of picked up digital and. No, uh, I've only been doing digital for maybe the past year and a half or two years, uh, something like that. It, it's it's a fairly new thing, but I I, I like it a lot. And those are all totally completely new programs that you've had to just pick up and learn on your own. Y yeah, yeah, it's all it's all self-taught. Um, luckily, you know, if, if you just want to draw, which is what I uh, initially picked them up for, if you just want to draw. It's simple enough to just find the pencil tool and then just start drawing. That's that's really easy. Um, you know, nobody really has to tell you to do that. In this day and age, if you really don't know something, you can you know look it up online. And yeah, <laughs> and you know, there's <laughs> there's art classes right at your fingertips. But yeah, it is something that it's it's self-taught. Uh, there's still plenty of stuff in the program that I don't know, but um, you know, I'll, I'll I'll pick it up eventually if, if it's something that I really need to learn. Cool. Um, so you've been drawing pretty much this entire time, which is great because mm -hmm. it looks awesome from here. But tell tell us a little bit about how. I mean, I guess you picked two different. Um, or positions for well um, originally when I was just you know trying uh, trying you know just loosening up my arm really uh -huh. um, yeah I did this pose uh, right here and but I just you know it's it's pretty light it's kind of hard to see so I just decided all right let me do a bigger uh, slightly darker sketch here and um, yeah this is this is generally how it goes so you know I'd, I'd read a script. Uh, an example like this, since I'm doing this so big, this might just be a cover. So I'd map it out. Let's you know. A lot of times, uh, I'll get a request from an, uh, the editor saying, "Want a nice big headshot of, like in this case, I'm drawing Armstrong from Archer and Armstrong." And so I'll you know just map it out like this, and pretty loosely, uh, like I'll have him looking over his shoulder. Now this is where. What I was talking about before, uh, drawing from real life comes into play. I'm not looking at anybody when I'm drawing this. But I have drawn so many people, real life people, in, you know, from when I was like 14 years old, uh, taking figure drawing classes. And all those skills come into play when I'm, I'm drawing comics. So this is when uh, I'll start mapping out a page and uh, getting the anatomy right. And I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be able to tell if the anatomy is right because I, I've uh, drawn people uh, so much. You sort of map it out. Uh, you know, I think that looks pretty good. And at this point, I've drawn Armstrong so much that I kind of know what you know his his clothes look like. Kind of map that out a little bit. And um, yeah, so that's how a simple maybe cover would go like that. Now. Something over here where the, the, the table, uh, where this page is broken down, you know, uh, I might like I drew Armstrong here. It's kind of hard to see. I know it's dark, but in a, an interior page, I would have 
you know, this shot of Armstrong here, and then I wouldn't have, I wouldn't necessarily have to follow this grid that you know that's drawn here. I might make my line like right there, right here, and then this would be a, a pan, the first panel of Armstrong, right here, uh, based on whatever just the script, just up. based on whatever the yeah. script says. Um, so I guess we'll move into the Twitter Q&A for now. We've been getting quite a few, actually. Um, so one of them is, do, 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 do. Let me see. So Art J. Mack asks, have you ever had any days where you, when you just can't seem to draw, and how do you deal with those days? Uh, there are days where I don't feel like drawing. Uh, maybe and those days what I'll normally do is that's those will be my sketch days that'll be the day where I say okay well not in real really uh, not in the mood to draw really so I'll just lay pages out today and then I'll do like what you see me doing here I'll just lay it out you know I'll lay out maybe a couple of pages and then the next day because it's very rarely that I don't want to draw two days in a row the next day then that's when I'll actually start to try and make things look good comics right now because I just don't have the time to read uh, <laughs> uh, comics because uh, like, like I said it takes me seven weeks so I don't need to be you know uh, I don't need to have uh, get distracted um, but right now uh, and I'm not saying this I promise you I'm not saying this because it's valiant but I read the first couple of issues of Ninjak and absolutely loved it and uh, so much so that I made made sure to to grab a, a copy of the trade when I was uh, at their booth a while ago. Uh, but other than that, it's I mean it's got to be Uncanny X Men. I mean that's that's what made me want to be, become a comic book artist. It's uh, turning a, an idea in uh, and, and, and making it, uh, you know, something that people can see. It's it, because most times the writer himself, most times, can't draw. So then that's my job. And I have to make sure that all of the emotions in their characters are, are coming through. So that that's the most important part for me is giving life to their to the, the writer's characters. We've got one from Comics 23. What book or piece has been your favorite, hands down? Um, well, that, that sort of goes back to the yeah. question from before. It would Uncanny X-Men. Um, the Bell Reno. How often do you find yourself drawing something you never thought you would? Uh, hmm, that's a t that's a tough one. Uh, there's a lot of surprises, I guess. Um, like you know, when you get to uh, redesign a character, I guess the last one would uh, would be when I drew Harbinger Wars, and there was a character that we were creating uh, from scratch named uh, Anomalia. And in Harbinger Wars, she transformed into animals. But the ca animals that she transformed into, they were cartoon animals because those were the only animals that she had uh, w w was familiar with. Okay. So she transformed into cartoon uh, animals, and but she was uh, pretty pretty vi violent with it. So just drawing those scenes of you know all oh, these cutesy animals and then they get, get really violent with people that was that was that was actually a lot of fun to draw and we got to design the character uh, from scratch so the writer said hey you know you um, don't you have a daughter let's let's make her look like your daughter so then I got to uh, make her look like my daughter that's pretty cool yeah 
We have a, what software question do you use? Uh, for drawing, I use um, uh, Manga Studio. And I find Manga Studio to be, other than drawing, I find it to be a little difficult to get to, you know, to, to learn what a lot of the tools do. So um, after I use Manga Studio, then I'll go into Photoshop and do all of the After Effects stuff like uh, inking it. And um, if I want to color, then I go into Photoshop and color. Just because I think Photoshop, for, for that kind of stuff, is, is easier to use. Studios asked, how did you find the balance between the emotion of the scene and the character? Uh, there's not really, I don't, I don't know if there's really a balance between it. Th those, those two sort of go hand in hand. I don't know if there's, there's a real balance to it. You, you, if the writer does a good job of conveying who the character is and uh, you know their outlook on life or, or whatever, then that, that should really come through in the artwork. So there, there shouldn't be a balance. Those, those are good. Go hand in hand. Okay, okay. Do you have anything else that we can share? Maybe while questions come in. Um, well, I guess I could start to tighten this up if you have, if you're not using a pen. No, okay. It. Uh, you know, um, not sure. I mean, I, I think we've. Uh, Covered everything. I mean, I could, you know, I'll, I'll stress again, uh, you know, the importance of of just drawing all the time. If if you can uh, go to art school, take art classes, uh, do so. That that's uh, hugely important. Um, yeah, just that really. Um, okay. Oh, and and there's nothing like getting FaceTime with. Uh, with a company, uh, because when I was trying to get into uh, comics, I had a really hard time. For years, I would just get you know rejection letters and things like that. And eventually, I I, I did get hired uh, uh, by mailing in some artwork one time, but eventually that work ran out. And when I got hired by Marvel, that was a face-to-face -face meeting with uh, some editors and they hired me there and I, I've been working pretty pretty much steadily ever since and that that was a, um, let's see I've been in the business now for 16 years but you know I got hired at Marvel like 13 years ago and you know I've, I've rarely had a day off really since then and uh, e even at Valiant I met uh, 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 the editor in chief there. I, I met him. Um, that was a face to face meeting, also. So, really get some good face time with uh, companies that y you know you may want to work for. What was it like that first day, Marvel? With Marvel, uh, that was that was kind of surreal. Uh, w what happened there was, uh, like I said, I'd done some image work uh, before that. And the guy that I worked for, he was at a convention in Chicago. And I, I went to this convention in Chicago specifically to try and uh, find some, some new work. So I went to uh, this guy's table and I said, hey, I'm, you know, I'm trying to get in touch with Marvel. And so he said, well, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll help you out, come with me. And he goes to the Marvel booth and he sort of just says, uh, he, sa he says, wait here, and he goes to the Marvel booth, says something to, to some editors, comes back out, and he says, all right, they said be back here at 1 o'clock. I said, all right, fine, I'll go walk around a little bit, come back at 1 o'clock. There's now a line of people trying to get editors to see their work, uh, other aspiring artists. And so, you know, I went ahead of those people, and I spoke to the, the editor, uh, the managing editor there, and I said, "Hey, uh, you know, uh, I was told to come back here at um, one o'clock um, for a portfolio review." So they said, "All right, sure." So, like I said, there's you know a whole bunch of people ahead of me, but I was allowed to you know skip ahead, uh, I guess. And 
Yeah, as soon as the uh, the managing editor uh, you know looks at my stuff, he opens it up to the first page. She gets up and then goes and has a conversation. And I'm thinking, oh great, you know, he couldn't even focus on my stuff. I guess it wasn't that interesting. He brings the other guy back with him, and then that's when they both said, hey, we'd like to try you out on uh, one of our X Men books. And uh, yeah, I mean. Th 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 that, that was it. Um, at that time, I had a job that I really hated, so I was really happy to quit it <laughs> and you know, just started working comics. And to this day, I feel kind of bad for whoever was standing in line behind me at that portfolio. <laughs> well, sweet. I mean, you wouldn't be here doing what you love if that hadn't happened, right? Right. Cool. So I'm going to go ahead and just let you draw, because okay. that's what we're getting a whole lot of feed of, just for me to be quiet <laughs> and let you draw. Are they so telling you to shut up? Yeah, basically. <laughs> So if you guys still want to submit some questions, um, go ahead. I'll go through them and ask them out as they come along. But yeah, we'll just go ahead and let you do your thing.
So we have a couple questions back. Um, how often do you use stats? I try not to use them too often. Uh, but sometimes it, it, it's absolutely necessary because a writer uh, will uh, write a scene where it's, and it's normally, it's almost always a, a close-up shot of a character, where the character may be frozen, it, it, the, fa the facial expression will be frozen uh, and, and because they, they may be staring at something off panel. And uh, they may be terrified with fear, staring at something off panel, and then in the next panel, they want the same facial expression, but something, now we see something, we, we may now see uh, a slight portion of whatever it is they're looking at. So you don't want to change that facial expression of that character. And sometimes, even though you may try to, just, you know, even if you get some, you know, some hairs uh, on their head out of place, Sometimes that may not be so good because that well now it looks like a totally you know you might make it look like a totally different you could well you could make it look like a totally different person by accident you know because right. sometimes it's hard to maintain uh, uh, all of the same lines so then you would have to then you would w what we call stat basically copy the image from the first panel of the, that character's face and then just simply copy it into the next uh, panel. And then whatever that little thing in the foreground that they're staring at, if the writer says, okay, now we can see a little portion of what they were staring at in the foreground, then, then that's the thing that you would draw that's new in the second panel. Cool. Um, best line reference? Um, Whenever you use line references, I guess? Well, no, I, I, I don't. Um, it's um, now the, the only reference is. Uh, that I'll use as you know in in my line of work is um, from from real life stuff. So um, you know, like the Empire State Building. Every time somebody says draw the Empire State Building, I always have to look up the Empire State Building because I just don't I don't have one nearby. So I have to look up a picture of that. If somebody says draw a particular animal, then you know I'll have to look up that animal. Uh, give you an example. Somebody you know asked me to draw, uh, I have a strange but fun commission request where somebody wants their favorite, uh, they, they want comic book characters, but it's squirrel versions. And I'm looking, I'm looking forward to drawing it. And I, if you ask me to draw a squirrel, I could sketch a squirrel out really quick for you. But I want to get the school. But I want to draw it right. Yeah, so I, I want to draw it, you know, as you know, close to real life as possible while right. wearing a superhero costume. And uh, so, you know, I, I looked up on my phone, looked up pictures of squirrels and downloaded them so that I could get it right. Uh, so references like that, you're all, I can overdo it with references a lot. Sometimes I'll look up references uh, too many and, you know, I may only draw it in like one panel and then I've looked up references for like three hours. Sometimes I, I can get carried away with it. And then another question, what is your proudest accomplishment? Uh, it's got to be drawing uh, Uncanny X-Men uh, for the first time. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> when you're a little kid and you say, okay, that's what I want to draw when I grow up, and then you actually get to do it. Um, you know, that was at, uh, it took me 20 years. It took me 20 years, and I, you know, so I finally did it. And so, yeah, it, it's got to be that moment. So Amy Mystery asked outside of, I'm sure this is outside of what you're already working on, but what Valiant character or title would you like to draw? Uh, well, you know, the one I was looking forward to the most was um, Exo Man of War, and I got to do an issue of, of that. But I really do like uh, Ninjak, so I guess that's probably next on my list. Cool. Um, S underscore Sad G asked, did you base the characters from Archer and Armstrong to people you know or total off of imagination? No, well, these characters were established before. So, no, okay. this was based on uh, old Valiant characters. Dan's really liking your Armstrong sketch, by the way. I'm glad because I'm trying to work around this pen. This pen is not cooperating. <laughs> Knife 
Sword 53 ask any hints for comic book style of drawing clothing draping on characters as well as character transformation? I don't know if there should be a comic book style way of doing things. I, I think you, you know, uh, I, I hate to repeat myself, um, but you know, it, it, you it's, it's drawing from real life again because uh, I was actually speaking to somebody t uh, today. Somebody uh, brought me their portfolio because they wanted me to take a look at it and give them some, some advice. And I told them, you know, I, I really like your style, but I can tell you don't have uh, the schooling behind it. And this guy really was a good artist, but the basics I could tell weren't there. He did what he could, you know. He he learned what he could along the way, but I can tell that it didn't. He didn't have, um, you know, really gifted teachers teaching him along the way. And he and then he confirmed. It. He was like, yeah, I, you know, I didn't. But so you know that that's um, uh, lost my train of thought. What was the, the original question again? The um Oh, now you lost it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the character transformation, clothing on. Oh, okay, yeah. So, so, style. all right. So, so yeah. Going back to that, uh, uh, you know, when you learn a lot, uh, you know, take whatever class you need to take along the way. Draw from real life. Have people, uh, the proper people, teaching you the correct way to do something. Then you'll learn how to transfer it into your comic book work. So that's why you want to learn the proper way to draw people, the proper way to draw clothing and drapery. Then you can learn, OK, well, this is how I'm going to apply it to comics. Don't look at, there, there's no certain comic book way of, of drawing uh, something. It's, it, it, it's learning how to draw it the right way. And then you apply it to, to your own comics. So just speaking on drapery, have you ever had like Specifics on like this is going to be this type of fabric, so make sure it kind of looks like that, or are you gonna, or it's just kind of, kind of left up to you. Like I know that this is going to be this type of bedding per se, and so it's going to look like this. Yeah, it, you definitely want to keep textures in mind. Um, you see that a lot with when people uh, will bring me their portfolios. If they get into a certain style, they can sort of lock themselves into drawing everything a certain way. They'll add a certain texture to everything. They'll give everything a rough texture. And you know, there are actually some people that can you know, do that and get away with it because that, that becomes their style. But generally speaking, you want to give things a, a different texture and a different look, a different surfaces. And you, you do that by varying your line weight a lot, too.
All right, Clayton. Um, well, thank you so much for your time. I'm going to let you finish this off camera, and then everybody be sure to keep an eye out for this on Twitter. We may or may not be giving this away, so just stay tuned on uh, GoHastings.com Twitter. And then uh, be sure to check us out next week. We will have Ryan Wynn, who is an anchor for Divinity. Um, same time next week, October 10th. And we'll see you back next week. Thank you.